Hi, I'm Pastor Tay of the Titus 2 Ministry and PastorTay.com. Welcome to Expresso. It's an interactive Bible study that is like Expresso, strong and smooth. Enjoy the taste. Hey guys, I'm Pastor Tay, and I'm a few minutes early. I'm just uh, testing the uh, equipment here. We're going to start right on time at uh, 5 o'clock Pacific and eight o'clock eastern and uh just wanted to jump on in early and give you guys a heads up so where are you guys come on in and say hello let me know how you guys are doing this is an opportunity for you guys to ask your questions make your comments you guys ready is that keith conley hey keith <laughs> you're a busy man didn't expect you to stop by but glad to see you Tonight we're going to be talking about anger. It really is the biggest problem that breaks marriages. So, Keith, are you there? Give me a thumbs up, man. Okay, you know how to do that? Push one of those icons. Give me a happy face or a thumbs up. And uh, the rest of you guys, uh, jump on in. And we're going to start in seven minutes, okay? <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to keep talking for seven minutes. But, um, uh, as promised, we're going to start right on time okay so that is the plan here all right so uh what can i talk about <laughs> uh, well, we're going to talk about anger tonight and um it is uh i tell you one of the most uh requested counseling uh topics okay i mean just all the time somebody in the marriage is angry there's a lot of stuff that uh, gets us angry right and uh, so tonight uh, we're going to uh, talk about it okay so that is uh, what I posted posted on uh, marriage builders page um, hey by the way if you have any um, friends who could benefit from them go ahead and send them the link to uh, the Facebook page Titus to marriage builders have them look it up and uh, uh, ask them to, to join and uh, if they want to catch this live, I'll let them in. And uh, we will talk about anger tonight. Now, this is Talk Live Tuesday. We've been doing it for almost two years now. Wow, time flies. And uh, this year, it's a little bit different where we um, are being more spontaneous, uh, more creative, more interactive than the first year where things were a little bit more of a formal presentation but uh, I'm really liking this because you know what I'm just gonna stop the presentation take your comments and questions so go ahead and uh, jump on in say hello drop your comments and questions and I'll just stop what I'm doing and uh, I will uh, answer your questions okay so tonight we'll be talking about anger specifically how anger breaks your marriage and uh, for the record and I'm gonna say this again I've already covered this topic well just one workshop um, uh, two years ago actually so that was a long time so I'm gonna review that real quick uh, tonight but uh, as we're still warming up and I'm just uh, jumping on here early so that you guys can uh, jump on in with me and that is that uh, oh Keith, did you? Oh, I see a thumbs up. I uh, appreciate that. Why didn't it pop up on my screen? Okay, comments will appear here. Interesting. Okay, I hope it pops up on the screen. If not, I'm going to try to look at my laptop. That's kind of weird. In the past, it uh, pops up here. So, uh, good to have you, Keith, join in. Anger is a really serious problem. And I'm going to say it's going to be one of the hardest to uh, extract out of your life i mean i'm speaking from just a counseling experience how hard it's been for people to work through the anger and uh, i tell you i was even thinking today that we should have several talk life tuesdays on anger okay let's see who else jumped in i don't recognize that icon okay but whoever that good looking couple is in that profile pic would you say hello let me know that uh, you are jumping in good to have you but um, you know um, two years ago when we started the um, marriage builders um, 
we were going strong as far as Talk Live Tuesday. And then what happened was, uh, well, a lot of things happened. And then we took a break for about six months or longer. And uh, I was off doing a lot of different things for Titus 2 Ministry. And oh, by the way, if you guys don't know who I am, <laughs> I'm Pastor Tay, founder of the Titus 2 Ministry. And uh, then uh, what we did was we took about six months off. And so here I am back again. Uh, for Talk Live Tuesday. I, I missed you guys. Um, been busy doing a lot of things. One of the things we ventured into was starting private online membership communities that um, really focused on specific things. Now, um, some people asked, well, what's the difference between this community and then all the other communities that are built that are more membership based? And the big difference is there is a higher level of uh, commitment, no offense, <laughs> a higher level of commitment and the investment of time and uh, skin in the game. You heard that expression uh, because this community, you know, is very relaxed. We're not asking anything. We're not, you know, trying to do any uh, strict uh, accountability or anything like that. It's kind of free. Although there's a lot of good stuff in this community, right? It's like, uh, hey, Martha, good to see you. Appreciate the hello. And a um, lot of uh, good things in the units tab. And by the way, you know where the units tab is, and I'm just killing time until we actually begin at 5 o'clock, which is just a minute here. Who else is here? Oh, Pastor Danny Frost is here. He is one of uh, the associates in the Titus II ministry. Uh, in fact, he reminds me that tonight or today is the grand opening, okay? So grand opening, guys, of Titus 2, overcoming depression and anger. And I will admit, that's what prompted me to talk about anger uh, in tonight's Talk Live Tuesday. But we have a private community called Titus 2, overcoming depression and anger. And the doors are open. And uh, we've been advertising that, and you guys are familiar. You guys can scroll down and see the links and uh, ask to join that community. So hello to you, Pastor Danny. Good to uh, have you join us. How weird that the actual device I'm using for the recording here is not showing the comments, but the comments are appearing on my laptop. Now, could it be that it's because I have my laptop open? I don't know. I'll figure this out. But I hope that... Um, I uh, will address because I want to address all of your comments in real time, okay? So listen, if I pass over and forget your comment, um, no, no offense, please repost. I mean, just uh, write it again or cut and paste it again, and uh, I will get to it. I'm going to try to look at my laptop here and see if I can uh, keep up with all the comments there, okay? So uh, let's get started. It's 5 o'clock. Welcome to Talk Live Tuesday. This is our weekly show, and uh, we want to highlight different things in marriage. In fact, uh, there is a tab called Units, and that tab is above you if you're watching this on a mobile device. But if you are watching this on a laptop or desktop, it is to your left. So go there, and you're going to see all the previous teachings and resources archived in the, that menu tab called units and it's broken down into four major areas they are communication conflict in-laws and sex those are the four major areas uh, for marriage and so what we've done in talk live Tuesday is uh, we've basically gone through those major topics uh, one each week and then once we're done we go back to the top and start the rotation all over again. And then along the way, we'll insert in other special things. Looks like somebody else joined in. Hello, Cheryl. Good to see you. Nice to see Cheryl Sahagin. She is a moderator inside Marriage Builders. Good to see you. And again, good to see Pastor Danny and Martha and Keith. And so you guys say hello, drop your comments and your questions. Okay, so I was saying these are the four major topics. We just keep going through them. I look at them and say, okay, last week I did this, and then the following week I'll do this. Okay, so 
right now I'm covering anger because tonight is the grand opening of Titus 2 overcoming depression and anger and that's a separate private community where we invest time and energy and accountability and teaching we'd love to have you join all you got to do is scroll down um, or actually pastor Danny if you're watching right now uh, feel free to drop a link for that Facebook actually not the Facebook community you got to go to the website uh, pastor Danny can you drop the link for the website uh, Titus2.com and then you look under the menu tab called schools and it will show you overcoming depression and anger okay so anyway tonight being the grand opening for that uh, anger and depression are on my mind and I thought that tonight we should have a special talk live Tuesday on anger and uh, you know as I was getting ready tonight I felt like we need to do this even more so listen, I'm going to try something different here. I'm going to um, exit out of my laptop, and maybe that will force the comments to appear on the screen, okay? So um, right now they're not. I don't know why, but um, it says comments will appear here, but they're not. Can somebody just say hello and see if it pops up on my screen? Because I don't want to miss, I want to answer your questions in real time okay so anyway uh, if that doesn't work I'm going to have to see what I can do just give me one second please because again I want this to be uh, interactive and um, right now it's not popping on the screen so one second please here's what I'm going to do I'm going to see if I can access um, the notes here oh okay so I see what you did Pastor Danny, thank you for doing that. Give me one more second. I'm just creating a split screen right here as uh, I get my notes out. You see Pastor Danny has put the uh, link for the online school. All you got to do is to go to our website, Titus2Institute.com and look for the school for depression and anger. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys inside there. In fact, after I finish tonight, I'm going to go and speak inside that group. All right, let's talk about anger tonight, and uh, feel free to drop your comments and your questions. Okay, this is your chance. Now, tonight, um, I've said it's the one of the most serious problems in marriage. It's one of the most requested counseling topics uh, in counseling, and so uh, uh, this is time well spent in going that. Now, for the record, I did do... A Talk Live Tuesday, almost two years ago, I don't expect you to remember that, but uh, almost two years ago, I did a topic called, Do You Have an Anger Problem? And so please access that. That was a good one. And uh, so it's under the unit category, Conflict. So go there and you guys can uh, watch that one all over again called, Do You Have an Anger Problem? Also, it is available on our YouTube channel called Espresso, and uh, go there, and you will see all of the Talk Live Tuesday videos there for our YouTube viewers. Again, look for the one called, Do You Have an Anger Problem? Yes or no? And in that uh, video, um, we covered some pretty important things. So here's what I'm going to do, and you guys can ask your questions, make your comments, and that is, um, just give me, like, five minutes okay to review the things I covered two years ago just five minutes is not a sufficient review but then I'll get into new stuff for tonight okay so in that workshop called do you have an anger problem I asked you to look at yourself you see the title do you have an anger problem and so I asked three major questions and um, yes or no and uh, in that workshop, the no answer is the better answer. Okay, so do you have an anger problem? No, <laughs> that's the better answer. Okay, so uh, can you just give me a couple minutes? I'll review that and we'll get into some new stuff for tonight. So I asked three major questions uh, on whether you have an anger problem or not. Again, the better answer is no. But here's question number one out of the three. Question one is, do you let the devil influence your anger okay do you let the devil influence your anger 
Yes or no? No is the better answer, but uh, there are a lot of people who, you know, will honestly say yes. Meaning, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27 says, Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. So the foothold in the original Greek is an opportunity. So let's confirm that the anger is all yours. But what you're doing is you're giving an, up the, an opportunity for Satan to come in and wield his influence on you. Okay, and uh, watch that video and it will give you insight into exactly how he does that. I'm not going to go into all of that. That will take too much time. But the question number one is, do you let the devil influence your anger? In other words, he's going to make it way worse okay and so you've experienced that where you were a little bit angry and then you became really angry and it's possible that satan was participating in your anger okay so he's got a bad agenda all right so that's number one do you let the devil influence your anger yes or no number two and again this is review of the video uh in the units category called do you have an anger problem and the question number two is does your anger cloud your judgment? In other words, you can't think straight. If that's the case, you got an anger problem, okay? Now, that might be a new idea to you about your judgment being clouded, uh, your thinking being impaired in some way. But in the Bible, and again, I can't go into a big review here, and I've given you the verses in that video, is that sin has a delusional effect on you. In other words, you can't think straight and so the point is it clouds your judgment and anger um one of the great sins is um it clouds you're not thinking straight it clouds your judgment it's uh i think the biblical word is it's deceitful and so now you're thinking all kinds of wrong things and i'm sure you've experienced that right when you got really angry and you've said things or thrown things or caused a lot of damage and then what happens when you calm down you say oh my goodness did i do that and then you get all embarrassed, right? And so that's my point, is that uh, anger just gets you all worked up, you know, the heat of the moment. And then when you calm down, you realized you are not thinking straight when you were angry. That is an indication that you have an anger problem, because if you enter into, into that anger mode, wow, you're not thinking straight. And that could be a very serious problem. And so couples say all the time, well, my husband and... I don't want to just pick on the husband, but just as an example, wow, he's like a different person, you know, when he gets angry. He's all nice, and then when he gets angry, you know, uh, he gets a little crazy and says all kinds of crazy things and so forth. And that's the impaired judgment. That's what sin does. So question number two, does your anger cloud your judgment? Yes or no? And no is the better answer. Uh, no question so far. Is it pretty straightforward? Okay, clear as mud. Okay, hopefully it's making some sense to you. Okay, so drop your comments uh, and then I will stop and answer your questions and comments. All right, this is review, so let me just make this quick. Here's number three, and this is the last one in the review. I've given you a total of three questions, obviously, in that video in 2018. Uh, it covered a lot of stuff. And the sec third question is, do you regularly get angry? Yes or no? Okay, regularly get angry, okay? Um, Cheryl, you're driving? <laughs> Is that Pastor Danny? Be careful, Cheryl. Okay, hey, don't be posting comments. Uh, Cheryl, you can post your comments later, which reminds me that if you're watching this on a replay, certainly you can uh, post your comments and co uh, questions later, and I will get back to that. And so that's the great thing about these videos. I see someone else jumping in. I can't tell by the profile icon. Please say hello. Let me know. Good to have you tonight. And uh, so the third question is, do you regularly get angry? And uh, hey, that's very real. Okay. And so watch that video. I'm just reviewing in 2018 called, Do You Have an Anger Problem? Where it talks about habits, a habitual, uh, it's a, a problem where you're stirring up uh, arguments and there's consequences you become a slave to anger the bible talks about being a slave to your sins okay so that's a quick review 
hopefully it gave you some sense of just how serious it is. I'm thinking some of you guys, we got almost a thousand people inside the Marriage Builders. Some of you guys are struggling with anger. And if you are, I encourage you to watch that video from 2018 called, Do You Have an Anger Problem? But uh, because of time, okay, I want to jump in to new material for tonight. And so this is a new contribution where I offer just a few, okay? Time uh, is escaping us. So just a few uh, biblical solutions on dealing with anger. And I say just a few because there are just so many things to consider. There are uh, a lot of things. And tonight I want to focus the remainder of the time on the person that I call the externalizer. In other words, his anger is on the outside. It comes out and, uh, you know, everybody gets uh, hurt by it. All right, Pastor Danny says, I used to have anger issues, took it out on other people. It made me feel very guilty. Okay, so that's what I mentioned, the clouding of the judgment where in the heat of the moment, you, you seem justified, but then later you feel really bad and guilty, so you come to your senses. That's the delusional nature of sin. It clouds your judgment. So thank you for that. But let's get into some new material tonight. I was saying that we're going to focus on the externalizer. Now, what's the opposite of the externalizer? It's the internalizer, the person who holds it in. I'm going to do another workshop in the future on the internalizer, who somebody who is angry but doesn't let it out. Okay, That's a whole different style. But tonight, because of time, we're going to focus on the internalizer. Okay? Excuse me, the externalizer okay, uh, who lets it out. And so here are some biblical solutions for it. So the externalizer is all on the outside. It's venting. It's coming on out. He's blowing up like uh, Mount Vesuvius, you know, that uh, famous volcano. And so all the people of Pompeii, so you know uh, how uh, Vesuvius blew up and all the lava and ashes came down the mountain and all the people died. Uh, from that and so well that's a terrible example isn't it but that's kind of what I'm saying some people are like a volcano like Mount Vesuvius and uh, blown up hey do uh, you know of any other volcanoes there's some up in the northwest and in Hawaii that are active and blown up and some people are active in their anger just like that and God's word has specific counsel okay for the man and the woman who is an externalizer, okay? And so, Martha, you wrote externalizer. Yes, uh, a lot of people are. And uh, so we need to talk about that tonight. And time permitting, I'm going to give you four biblical solutions tonight. I have some doubts whether I can get through all four. If I don't, I'm going to promise you that in the future we're going to cover more. So let's get to it. Four applications for the externalizer, the one who lets it out onto somebody else, okay? Number one, apply humility, okay? Can somebody write that down in the comment section? Put a number one, apply humility. These are biblical solutions for the externalizer because the externalizer is somebody who is very prideful, okay? Think with me. We're talking about the opposite, which is humility. Okay, because you see the externalizer has all this pride and feels like he or she has to defend his or her ego. And so externalizers feel disrespected. They feel like they got to get up if, uh, and defend themselves if somebody disagrees. And so they use their volume, they use their words, they use their fist or whatever to show that, hey, I'm not going to let you uh, disrespect me like that. And that's sourced, that comes from uh, pride. You know, you, you think very highly of yourself. That's why you're getting all worked up. That's why you gotta, you feel like you gotta defend, okay? I'm seeing some uh, hearts and different things there. You guys jump on in and make your comments there. Okay, so you gotta feel like, you feel like you gotta jump on in. So we're talking about pride. We're talking about ego. And we're talking about, write this word down, selfishness because the externalizer and this is all under point number one which is apply humility 
the externalizer has no humility because uh, he or she is uh, selfish. Okay, it's all about their uh, offense, their feeling of offense, their feeling of uh, disrespect, or uh, their desire to correct and to make sure that everybody knows that uh, they are right. They are Mount Vesuvius, or Martha, you wrote Mount St. Helen. That's a good one. Okay, is that the one in the Pacific Northwest? All right, and so basically it's the heart. We're talking about the heart now of the... Um, externalizer so listen it's not as simple as hey be quiet stop saying all those things although that is a biblical solution it's not as simple as that it's your heart that needs to change your heart of selfishness your heart of pride your heart of uh, hey look at me in other words you're the center of everything and so there's a heart problem here so can I say the externalizer is somebody who doesn't have a big heart the person who has a big heart is a, is a man or a woman of humility, right? And caring for the other person. But the externalizer has a small heart, okay? So, good evening, Sarah. Good to see you. And so, the externalizer is uh, like the Grinch, right? You remember the Grinch during Christmas time? What was the problem? Why was he so grouchy and selfish? He had a small heart, right? <laughs> so, you're a Grinch. You're a grouch, okay? And uh, so you're green with all of that selfishness and that is the problem. So who can transform that? Isn't it God? Isn't it the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart to extract and deal with your lack of humility, your pride? Okay, that's what we're talking about, your selfishness. I'm going to say that selfishness, and write this down, selfishness is at the heart of the externalizer's anger. Okay, he's thinking about himself. Okay, he feels like he's the sun, and all the planets, which represent his family and friends, they all have to revolve around him. It's almost like, uh, look at me, I'm in the center, and I mean that literally because, listen, what happens when an externalizer shouts or throws something and does all that? What's he doing? He's telling everybody to stop what they're doing, and pay attention to him. Isn't like that the um, one of the greatest example of selfishness and self-centered? When he yells and screams, or when she does that, okay, he's basically saying, "Stop what you're doing, and look at me." It's self-centeredness. I'm telling you right now, and we should all feel convicted. All of us is when we externalize our anger. It's like the most non-Christian thing to do. Because you're basically saying, look at me, all right? And when you're saying, look at me, isn't that the most non-Christian thing? Because Christianity is all about looking at the other person, right? Esteeming others better than yourself. It's all about paying respects to others. Isn't that who Jesus was? So even in the midst of our talk about anger, here we are, talking about Jesus, the great servant. Matthew, excuse me. Mark chapter 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so at the heart of the gospel, at the heart of Christianity, is the heart of a servant. Someone who always considers the needs of other people ahead of its own. This is the mind renewal that you need. This is the heart transformation you need. Listen, if you are an externalizer, somebody who vents and externalizes the anger. You're basically saying, look at me, okay? I'm the sun and all of you have to stop what you're doing and revolve around me. And that's exactly what happens. What happens in the family if somebody all of a sudden starts throwing things or shouting? What happens? Everybody stops and has to pay attention to that external expression. Do you know what I mean? And so here's a true story, guys. It was two days ago. Uh, Three days ago, on Saturday, tonight's Tuesday, last Saturday, I was uh, at a shopping center, and uh, it was very crowded, and all of a sudden, a truck pulls up, I was in the outside of that shop, shopping center, truck pulls up, and the man is screaming, I mean, externalizing his anger towards his mother, okay, and uh, the mother, it looked, she looked like she was like 85 years old. She was holding one of the walkers and just trying to 
get out of the truck, but he is just screaming four-letter words, F-bombs, I mean F-words to his mother so loud that all of us stopped what we were doing. We couldn't believe it. All of us stopped what we were doing and was watching this one man make a spectacle of himself as he was completely dishonoring and uh, yelling at his mother. She then is screaming back at him. And that's what ventilating, or I should say externalizing, does, is it uh, stops everything. You become the center. You become the sun. And everything revolves around you. Hey, guys, tonight I'm not going to be able to finish all four points. I hope to uh, pick up on uh, these four next time. Um, but uh, let me go over another point. We have a few more minutes. Number one was uh, apply humility, okay? Number two is apply restraint. Somebody put that down in the comment flow there. So apply restraint, okay? I'm going to see if uh, all the comments are coming out. Hey, Martha, I appreciate you writing Mark 1045. That's a good one. Selfishness at the heart. Thank you for writing all of these comments down. I'll try to keep an eye on that. And um, so that's what we're talking about here. Okay. So um, number two is apply restraint. Number one was apply humility. Restraint is don't say that. Okay. The externalizer blurts out all of his feelings, all of his thoughts. He's quick to show his anger. You know, one woman said to me, true story. She said, when I get mad, it just comes out. In other words, she was justifying it. It just comes out. <laughs> I can't help it, in other words. Okay, so she's like, I, I can't control it. It just comes out. You know, another guy said to me, what can I say? I'm just brutally honest. Okay, in other words, justifying that it just comes out. And uh, so that's how people see it, as I can't help it. It's just who I am. Okay, you knew when you married me. You know, when you married me, I was like that. <laughs> you know, we make all kinds of comments like that, as if it's, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, you know, people have that attitude. Hey, that's just how I talk. Or, you know, guys would say in counseling, hey, pastor, I just grew up in a family of shouters. I mean, we just all shouted all the time. In other words, there's nothing I can do about it, right? I mean, that's what people think. So uh, let me give you this scenario. Let's say, for example, you and your spouse are just uh, having it out. Let's say you're arguing, shouting, and uh, saying all kinds of terrible things to one another. Okay, and in that scenario, uh, if I was there, you would say, hey, I can't stop. I mean, that's who I am. I can't help it. I mean, that's the comment that people make. And uh, let me say that let's suppose that you're arguing and screaming and shouting and pointing a finger and blaming each other for everything right and then all of a sudden the phone rings right and uh what would you do if you have to answer the phone like if it's your boss or something and you have to answer and you're shouting and screaming at your you know spouse what would you do okay you would pick up the phone and uh you would say hello oh hey boss how's it going oh i'm fine everything's fine oh wife and kids are fine thanks for asking in other words, we can control ourselves. You know, people who say, I can't help it. It just comes out. That's not true. Because you know what? You don't shout and scream at Sunday school, okay? You don't stand up and scream your head off at church or at your work or at your boss. In other words, you can control, okay? And so tonight, all you married people, and if you are in the marriage builders, you're married. Talking to all of you, okay, and me, <laughs> all of us, we need to take a hard look at ourselves. We can't make excuses saying we can't control it or say, I can't help it or I'm just brutally honest. Here's the truth. We control our externalizing to everybody else except the people we love. Did you get that? We control that to everybody else, our boss. Sunday school, church, you know, we control it, but we don't control it to our spouse. And so I think we need to take a hard look at ourselves. And what we're really saying here is, I value, okay, 
I value the other relationships. And ain't that the truth? You value the other relationships like your boss because you don't want to lose your job. Okay? There's consequences to losing your, uh, losing your cool at Sunday school. You value those relationships more than your marriage. And so tonight, we need to take a hard look at that. And maybe some of us need to repent that we care more about the other relationships in our lives than our marriage. And so that's a, that's a tough word, I know. But anger is a very serious problem that breaks our marriages. And so we need to take a hard look at ourselves, okay? Hey, whoever is popping in, good to see you guys. Drop a comment and questions. Uh, we only have a few more minutes. Let's just keep on going. But let me share some verses with you. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. It says, a man of knowledge uses words with restraint. Proverbs 17, verse 27. The second half of that verse says, a man of understanding is even tempered. Here's another verse, Proverbs 29, verse 11. A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. Okay, so that's the second biblical principle I wanted to share with you tonight. And that is apply restraint, okay? You don't have to say that. And don't say you can't control it because we all can. All right, so let's quickly review. Number one was apply humility. Number two is apply restraint. Looks like we have time for another one. Number three is apply a new style and selection of words. Let me say that again and somebody write that down in the feed, please. And that is apply a new style, number three, and selection of words. And so here's my point. If you are an externalizer, and we'll cover the internalizer in another video, the externalizer is somebody who doesn't mince words. You know that expression? You're just saying it, whatever comes out. It's not prepared, you know? Think of the analogy of cooking. That would be like taking a slab of red meat and just throwing it on the table and said, okay, uh, there's your dinner. Nobody does that. In other words, you would prepare okay, that meat uh, in a way that it is presentable and uh, it can be eaten. And so you want to take time to select. And so people who are ventilators or externalizers are not selecting. That's the point. They're, they're just throwing things out, like throwing out a slab of raw meat, you know. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be selecting your words. You should be preparing your words, which is what you do again at work, right? You don't just say whatever to your boss. You need to be carefully selecting your words. You know, you don't just say, you don't just say it and then, you know, after all the damage, then say, hey, I didn't mean that, you know, you know, or hey, you know, you know, I just talk like that, you know, don't take me too seriously. Don't talk like that. In other words, you got to be careful in the words that you use. Words are inflammatory. The words are provocative. It, it uh, sparks emotions. Words are loaded. Words are incendiary. <laughs> There's a big word, right? It sparks a flame in the other person. Okay? So the externalizer needs to be very careful. That's the biblical counsel for you if you are an externalizer tonight. Is You have to think before you speak. You got to carefully select your words. You have to use words that are not inflammatory, but actually turns away the anger. Pop quiz. Does that sound familiar to you? <laughs> a gentle answer. In other words, words that are carefully selected. What does it do? Turns away wrath. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word. What does it do? Stir up anger. That's Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. That's a very well-known verse. Write that down, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. It's the idea that you want to carefully select your words in a way that actually calms situations down. So do you know people like that? People who actually carefully select their words and they're smoothening out the situation, calming people down, as opposed to people who are externalizers. They're just getting everybody all worked up. And uh, listen, you've got to take a hard look at yourself. And don't just say, I'm just brutally honest. No. 
Number three, okay, is apply a new style and selection of words, okay? And so uh, gentleness, turn down the volume and don't speak in those ways. Now, select words that are healing and positive and inspirational. Like uh, in that same chapter, Proverbs 15, verse 4, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. Wow, that is a powerful verse right there. Okay, so you know what? Looks like I can get to number four. <laughs> I didn't think so, but I'm just going to go another five minutes and give you number four. I said there's four things that I wanted to cover tonight. Do you guys remember what the first three are? Number one is apply humility. Number two, apply restraint. Number three is apply a new style and selection of words. And number four is apply sensitive timing. Number four is apply sensitive timing. Now, you know that saying, timing is everything? You know, the externalizer needs to memorize that because the externalizer has no sense of timing, right? They're shouting, screaming, look at me. It's all driven by uh, selfishness and feeling like they're the center of everything. And so they feel kind of this empowerment to just, you know, I got to speak now, okay? I'm not going to wait, okay? Now's the right time. But now is not the right time. This is a great lesson that the externalizer must learn, okay? Because, and again, I'm going to... We're going to cover all of these things and more inside the new community called Titus 2, Overcoming Depression and Anger. But tonight, we're just giving you some insight with number four. Very important because the externalizer has no sensitivity, no awareness of the surroundings. And so they're not aware of timing. And how much the Bible talks about sensitivity towards timing. Now that should remind you of another video that is inside the units tab. Go there and look under communication. In fact, it was the first video I did two years ago on Talk Live Tuesday. It's called Wisdom and Timing in Communication. Somebody dropped that inside the feed because I want you to go back and watch that because it emphasized the importance of timing. Consider the timing and the situation of your words before you actually speak. So remember that guy I told you about last Saturday who's dropping F-bombs on his mother at a shopping center. He's not even aware of where he is and just that's not right. And so the externalizer is somebody who suffers from insensitivity, right? And so what does he have to do? He has to learn the biblical principle of sensitivity towards timing and the situation. And so let me share with you out of that same chapter in Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 28, the heart of the righteous weighs its answer, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. And so he's like old faithful, the geyser. It just gushes out. And you know, old faithful, you have no idea when that geyser is going to go off. And so the ventilator or the externalizer is like that. You have no idea. It's just going to, boom, just come out. But in the verse 28 of chapter 15, uh, of Proverbs, it says, the heart of the righteous weighs its answer. And in the original Hebrew, it was a business transaction where they used weights. So picture the ancient cart of vegetables, you know, on the ancient streets of Jerusalem. And, uh, the you know, the businessman is carefully weighing things before he says, okay, that'll be 10 shekels, you know. So the point is, he took his time, evaluated, and then he spoke and so in the same way like a business transaction where you carefully calculate things calculate your words weigh the situation be sensitive to the timing and the situation before you actually speak now in that video two years ago called wisdom and timing in communication it's under the unit category communication and here we are under the unit category conflict as we're talking about anger but um, I want to remind you of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. When I start reading it in a minute, you will immediately recognize it. It's a very well-known verse. But um, 
There's a phrase in there that is not as well known, which I would like to highlight. But let me read that for you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 is, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful. By the way, come out of your mouth, that's the uh, externalizer, right? Come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up. And then it says, according to their needs. Now in the original Greek, that phrase, according to their needs, is according to the need of the moment. Some translations have that literal phrase, according to the need of the moment. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. Assess the moment. Consider the timing. What does that moment require? Does it require your harsh words? Does it recur, or require you gushing out all kinds of terrible things? Throwing things? Externalizing? Is that what is necessary for that moment? What is the need of that moment? Ephesians 4.29 That phrase is not as well known. The first part is well known. You know, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth except what is building others up, edifying. You know all that, but that phrase... According to the need of the moment. That's what we want to emphasize tonight because you want to always be aware. So all you externalizers out there, we'll talk about the internalizer next time. But the externalizer, okay, is somebody who is not aware of what is necessary for that moment. Ephesians 4.29 is the verse that we're considering right now. Okay, so that's it for tonight, guys. While time flies and we're having fun, right? Uh, I only have a couple more minutes. I got to get over to the other community. I'll be speaking live inside the new community that just opened tonight called Titus 2 Overcoming Depression and Anger. And listen, if you guys are really struggling with depression and anger, we'd love to see you join that community. And uh, Pastor Danny dropped the link inside the feed to Titus2Institute.com where you can go and uh, you can subscribe to uh, this brand new community. The doors are open. I'm going over there in a couple minutes. Uh, but before I go, uh, I want to tell you that this video will be archived in the unit category called Conflict. And there is already one inside there called Do You Have an Anger Problem? And so now this is another installment to the topic of anger. And I'm feeling like, hey, we're going to have to do some more. What do you guys think? You guys feel like we need some more? We need to talk about the externalizer. We need to talk about the dangers of anger. We have so many more things to talk about. All this stuff we're going to do in full in that new community called Titus 2, Overcoming Depression and Anger. But we need to sign off for tonight. I appreciate you guys uh, visiting. And I hope it's helpful. I hope that you guys invite your friends to join this group, Marriage Builders. It is free. Please join and uh, tell them. To go access the unit categories, communication, conflict, in-laws, and sex. And um, tell them they're going to find all kinds of good stuff. And I hope tonight was another installment of good stuff here on Talk Live Tuesday. So until next Tuesday, okay, every Tuesday, um, we're here. 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. I hope you benefited. Uh, definitely check out the replay. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys. And listen, if any of you guys need to talk to somebody, you know you can contact me for a free conversation. Just private message me and uh, access the other resources that are there. But uh, I'm going to say good night to you as I go over to the other community. But uh, see you guys. Have a great night and be blessed and uh, control your anger. <laughs> see you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for a devotional drink today. If you love espresso, click here to subscribe so you know when the next one is ready to enjoy. Visit our website for resources for every chapter of your life. And if you're thirsty for more, click here. See you next time. May God bless your day.